What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfect Genetis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my pathology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about cell adaptation, cell injury, and cell death. We discussed atrophy, hypoplasia, hyperplasia, hypertrophy, metaplasia, dysplasia, and neoplasia. And we divided neoplasias into benign tumors and malignant tumors or cancers. We covered hypoxia versus hypoxemia and the different types of hypoxia and the different causes of cell injury. We talked about apoptosis and necrosis, the three mechanisms of apoptosis and the six subtypes of necrosis. After that, we talked about the complement system, the hypersensitivity reactions, acute inflammation, cytokines, interleukins, and inflammatory mediators. Today, we shall talk about such a mediator, which is known as bradykinin. There is a rule in medicine that says, if it ends in IN, the odds are it's a protein or at least a peptide. Bradykinin is a peptide. Why do we call it bradykinin? It literally means slow motion, which is very relaxing. Relaxing. You know what else is relaxing? The smooth muscles of the blood vessel. So the blood vessel is going to dilate. Bradykinin is a vasodilator. Now let's get started. Click the like button, click the subscribe button before I start swelling. This is my pathology playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum understanding and retention. Not to be confused with my patient's urine retention. A quick review of inflammation. We have two types of inflammation, acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. Who are the heroes of acute inflammation? Your neutrophils, aka polymorphonuclear cells. What are the heroes of chronic inflammation? Your lymphocytes for the most part, i.e. the mononuclear cells. The outcome of acute inflammation is A, resolution, or B, progression into a chronic inflammation, or C, abscess formation. The abscess is a collection of pus, and the pus cells are, you guessed it, the neutrophils. What are the sequelae of chronic inflammation? I can leave a scar, I can make you disabled, or I can give you secondary amyloidosis. I've talked about amyloidosis in a separate video in this pathology playlist. The video is titled Amyloidosis. Acute inflammation. What's the problem? The problem is that your body has been invaded with microorganisms, for example, bacteria. These bacteria are not located inside the cells. They are not located in the blood, but rather they start in the interstitial space. Now we would like to fight these bacteria, but the problem is that your neutrophils are in the blood, but the bacteria is outside of the blood vessel. So what should we do? We should push the neutrophils away from the blood and towards the interstitial space. How does that happen? In several steps. Margination, getting closer to the margin or the side, not in the middle. Diapedesis, which means acquiring pseudopods, false legs. Then amoeboid movement. Then some chemotactic agents are going to attract us to the interstitial space, such as interleukin-1, interleukin-8, leukotriene-B4, and more. See my video on interleukins. Then we better make those bacteria tasty so that our macrophages get to enjoy themselves while eating the bacteria. And in order to facilitate this, we better dilate the vessel to make it more leaky. How do you dilate the blood vessel? We need histamine and nitric oxide and we need bradykinin as well. So bradykinin is a vasodilator. Bradykinin promotes acute inflammation. And if you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionetics.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. And what are the cardinal signs of acute inflammation? The answer is, they are, in English, redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. And in Latin, ruber calor tumor dollar functulase. So bradykinin is not only responsible for vasodilation and therefore the redness, the hotness, and the swelling, but also responsible for pain mediation. I've talked about pain sensation and the gait theory of pain in my neuroanatomy playlist. If you wish to see more videos like this in the future, drop some fire emoji in the comments. Let's talk about bradykinin. Where does bradykinin come from? It comes from high molecular weight kinetogen. Calicrin will stimulate this process, but ACE enzyme will inhibit it. If you remember my video on the coagulation cascade, we have talked about the intrinsic pathway and who stimulated factor 12, the subendothelial collagen and calicrin and high molecular weight kinetogen. 
The intrinsic coagulation pathway is longer and starts with factor 12. Here is factor 12. How do you get factor 12 to be the active factor 12? You need four things. You need the subendothelial collagen because the endothelium has been injured. You need platelet factor 3. You need high molecular weight kinergen and you need calicrin. After 12 is active, 11 is active, 9 and then 8. 8, 9, 11, 12. 8, 9, 11, 12, because 10 is here in the middle. What do you call that? This is the contact group. Why? Because now the blood is coming in contact with the subendothelial collagen. So here is factor 12. You need calicrin, high molecular weight kinogen, subendothelial collagen, and plate factor 3 to be active into the active form of factor 12. Factor 12 will do two things. It will activate factor 11. This is the intrinsic pathway so that we can make fibrin. It will also activate the conversion of pre into calicrin to make more activated factor 12. It's a positive feedback loop and it's beautiful. High molecular weight kinogen is a plasma protein. It happens to be an alpha globulin. Contrast that with the coagulation factor because they are beta globulin. And this is different from the immunoglobulins or antibodies because they are gamma globulins. What does the high molecular weight kinogen produce? It produces bradykinin. We call them kinins. What are the functions of bradykinin? Many. It causes vasodilation. It mediates pain and natriuresis. It increases vessel permeability and it increases contraction of non-vascular smooth muscles such as your bronchi. How does your blood coagulate in your body? Using the intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway. But if you put your blood in a test tube, your blood only clots using the intrinsic pathway because there is no tissue factor in the tube because there is no tissue. Only the intrinsic can activate it. All right, how can the intrinsic pathway get activated even though you don't have subendothelial collagen? That's easy. You still have high molecular weight kinogen in the tube, calicrin, plate factor 3, and the wet surface of the glass, which is negatively charged. And that's why if you have a patient who suffers from deficiency of the high molecular weight kinogen, it's usually not that clinically significant when it comes to the bleeding and coagulation because you have other factors that help. Bradykinin is a kinin. Tell me more about kinins. Kinins include two things, bradykinin and calidin. So here is calicrin becoming kinin. That's the most important part. That's the rule. And I'll give you two examples of that. Here is a calicrin becoming a kinin. Here is a calicrin becoming a kinin. In the tissue, you have the tissue, low molecular weight kinogen becoming calidin. But in the plasma, you have the high molecular weight kinogen becoming bradykinin. Kininogen is becoming bradykinin. What does kinin mean? I-N is usually a protein. Kine from kinetic motion. Brady because it's slow. Remember, bradykinin causes vasodilation. And of course, this will decrease the speed of the flow. Kininogen, what does gen mean? Genesis, generation, creation of the kinin. Let's talk about the angiotensin converting enzyme. The ACE enzyme really hates bradykinin. ACE will prevent the formation of bradykinin. Even if you succeed in making some bradykinin, ACE will take it to the cleaner. It will convert it into inactive metabolites, degradation products, or simply pieces of trash. And that's why ACE deserves a new name. It's a kinin ACE. It's the destroyer of the kinin. Now, what's going to happen if I take an ACE inhibitor? Oh, now the ACE is gone. The enemy of bradykinin is gone. Therefore, bradykinin will increase like it's nobody's business. And will start to go crazy, causing too much vasodilation, too much pain, vessel permeability, increased contraction of non-vascular smooth muscles such as bronchoconstriction and cough. So I end up with hypotension and dry cough. And that's why we have two relatively common side effects of ACE inhibitors. And these include dry cough and angioedema. Moreover, when I take an ACE inhibitor, I will not be able to convert angiotensin to angiotensin 2 because the ACE enzyme is gone. Therefore, I will not be able to make aldosterone. I'm not able to secrete the potassium and I will end up with hyperkalemia. So the side effects of ACE inhibitors include dry cough, angioedema, hypotension, renal impairment because I cannot increase the GFR because I cannot constrict the efferent arterial and there is naturesis, there is acidosis with hyperkalemia. Metabolic acidosis, that is. Remember the renin angiotensin aldosterone system? Sure, renin is released. Remember the receptor was beta-1. When beta-1 gets stimulated, renin gets released more. Angiotensinogen becomes angiotensin 1, and the ACE enzyme, angiotensin converting enzyme, will convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, and then angiotensin 2 will make you aldosterone. It will also vasoconstrict. 
But when you take an ACE inhibitor, what do you think is going to happen? Now, ACE is gone. All right, bradykinin is going to run amok, causing vasodilation, pain, bronchoconstriction, and increased vessel permeability. And that's why when you take an ACE inhibitor, you might suffer from dry cough and angioedema. Vasodilation can cause hypotension. When there is no aldosterone, you can get metabolic acidosis with hyperkalemia. Here is bradykinin causing dry cough and angioedema. Angioedema can be an emergency because it can close your airways. If you want to learn more about bradykinin, serotonin, cyclic AMP, histamine, the treatment of asthma, COPD, cystic fibrosis, and more, download my Utacoids pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. It comes with videos, notes, and cases. If you value what I do, help me make more videos by supporting the channel. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 750 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe hit the bell smash like support my channel on patreon paypal or venmo go to my website to download my courses notes and cases or if you would like me to personally tutor you be safe stay happy study hard this is medicosis perfectionados where medicine chemistry math and physics make perfect sense